I've written a column for The Sun tonight about Prince Charles. Uh, I keep saying this. Everyone does, don't they? Uh, King Charles III. About, I've rarely seen any public figure rise to such momentous occasion, I don't think, in the way that he does. And as always, you write a column like that, and it certainly it, it will stand the test of time. But there was a moment today which I think just showed that underneath this exterior which he's putting on is a man that's just lost his, the mother that he loved, coming so soon after the father that he loved, under enormous pressure to hit the right tone and hit it running as our new monarch. And there was this moment where he went to sign uh, an official document today with his ink pen, and this is how he reacted. <clears throat> what is that? Is it September 12th? 13th, sir. Oh, God, the wrong date. 13th? Yes, sir. I mean, this is for CBS News, this footage. I mean, I was surprised that we get to see that, actually. I think it should have been better protected. But it was an insight just into behind the, the, the veneer, is a man who's under enormous pressure, both personally and professionally. Well, yesterday I was privileged to be in Westminster Hall mm. that was just being spoken about, this 900-year-old mm. hall, one of the oldest parts of this country. Mm. I mean, along with Windsor Castle and the Tower of London, uh, you have Westminster Hall and Westminster Abbey. These are the ancient parts of our country. And he spoke about that and how much it meant to him mm. And with all of us, lords and members of parliament over there, and you could see how moved he was. Mm. And actually, I saw a photograph today which showed that he was in tears um, during during that occasion. But Emily, that little snapshot there of him slightly losing his temper about a faulty pen, I just thought it just showed us that beneath all this, there must be a torrent of emotions raging inside this new king. I'm sure, because he's, he's probably also exhausted. Yeah. Um, what I was interested to get more detail on today, which was George Bush's daughter was over to interview him. Mm. Um, sorry, was interview over here to interview the new Queen consort. And clearly they were not expecting the Queen to pass away, where my reading had slightly been that because our King had been with her all week, mm. that they were concerned. So I think this really did come as a shock. I don't think they're expecting... So he will also be suffering still from the shock. And you don't... Eat, I imagine the amount that he's having to deal with and present himself, mm. the speeches, becoming king, I doubt he's had any time to... I, I don't like using the word process, but in a way, as you say, he's not... To properly grieve. He's I mean, not, how can they, he? He's they haven't public, had yeah. much, and I am surprised... I mean, the world's cameras, Adam, aren't they? they? They're focused on this man now and his, his wife, Camilla relentlessly from the second they appear in public and they're having to appear in public all the time whilst going through what yeah. I would imagine is pretty intense grief. Well, I, I agree with that, but on the other hand, the reason why the world's cameras are there is because, as the Queen said, you need to be seen that these rituals that they're going through visiting uh, the four nations of the country are important in terms of establishing the monarch as mm. uh, the head of state uh, of all the United Kingdom. And, you know... I'm afraid my reaction looking at that footage, and I know all the pressures that mm. you've mentioned and all the undoubted genuine grief, is my reaction is the Queen wouldn't have behaved like that. Right. And she, well, she, 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 she would have made a joke of it. And, and Well, and she probably wouldn't have actually had that happen in front of a camera. I mean, that's the thing. I'm surprised that well, he's not no, been better no, no, protected. No, these signing ceremonies... Mm are part of the whole deal. I right. mean, that's, that's why they're taking place. I mean, we saw... I don't know whether Lord Bernard Moria was there, but at the accession ceremony, everyone who was there yes. signed a document in public, and quite a lot but of... But only them. CBS cameras were capturing that moment, and I'm just surprised we've been able to see it, because it does show a moment away from what we're seeing. I mean, he loses... Yeah, but I, I, I mean, I'm afraid I do think these... You these, think you these instances, it. these off-camera moments, can be quite revealing yeah, about, about they, they what, can what be, but I think we should really cut him like. some slack. I, I want to talk, uh, if I may, uh, Lord Billamoria. There's this issue about how far do you go to show the Queen respect in cancelling things? There's been a whole slew of things cancelled. The football was all cancelled at the weekend, but the cricket, 
the racing, the golf all went on and showed a respectful moment of silence and applause and then moved on, which I felt was the right way to handle it. Um, what do you think about this? Centre parks today, for example, have suddenly decided they're going to stop everything on Monday, on the day of the funeral, and remove every family who's on the holiday there and tell them they've got to leave, which seems to me completely outrageous and the very last thing that Her Majesty would have wanted. What, what has happened over here is you've got a figure that has sort of risen above all other people in the world in many ways for 70 mm. years, and you've got this individual, this monarch of all monarchs, a queen of all queens, that is not just the most famous monarch in the world, but the most respected. I mean, I've received messages from every corner of the so world. So do you think Senator Parks were right? So I, no, I'm saying that people, that, if you look at, look at the sentiment that people are expressing, mm. look at the people have started queuing to pay respects in Westminster Hall from yesterday. I remember but yesterday, we, when I example, went to swear my oath, I was told, one of the peers said, do you realise people have started... But when you have up. a massive holiday company with a load of people who pay good money and they're told they have to leave all these parks around the country, I think that is a ridiculous but, way of supposedly well, showing the Queen respect. I, I think what you're seeing is, is companies, frankly, using it as a bit of an excuse. I mean, I've, yeah. I've had two of those, you know, those things when you phone up and you get a recorded message, mm. two of them saying oh, well, we can't get your message today because of the circumstances. And, you know, we know people, I think it was in Norwich, uh, closed bicycle parking spaces. As a market. Well, there's food, <laughs> food banks in Wimbledon are being yeah. closed on Monday. Yeah. And that caused outrage. And people saying, well, let me get this straight. We're going to be shutting down food banks for the most desperate, hungry yeah. people in the country. Whilst at the same time, the reason given is because there's a funeral for one the, of the richest the people in the The only thing I would say, and I don't know whether quite how it works out, mm. but... Rightly, it's been called a bank holiday on Monday, mm. a, a day for everyone to show their respect. And I think some companies may have contractual things with their employees about them not being there at bank holidays right. and all that kind and of stuff. And also me... maybe not wanting to be accused of not allowing their employees yeah. to yeah. mourn their queen. Emily, I wanted to talk to you about um, Princess Anne, who put out a statement uh, just before we came on air saying how fortunate she felt to share the last 24 hours of my dearest mother's life. It's been an honour and a privilege to accompany her on her final journeys, witnessing the love and respect shown by so many. Omniture has been both humbling and uplifting. We will all share unique memories. I offer my thanks to each and every one who shares our sense of loss. And she then goes on to say that um, she offers uh, very grateful for the support and understanding offered to her dear brother Charles as he accepts the added responsibilities of the monarch. To my mother, the Queen, thank you. I, I do think in many ways... Anne is the most like her mother of all the other royals, actually. And watching her following her mother's hearse all around the country has been incredibly moving, I've, I find. Just watching... Yeah, incredibly moving. I think if you hear anyone talking about the royals, Anne is the unsung heroine. Yeah. She's the hardest-working royal. The least celebrity She's chaser. the least celebrity. She works the hardest. She doesn't chase the media. Yeah. She's never got caught in any kind of scandal. Um, <laughs> I mean, there may have been some when she was incredibly young, but been it's... A few been a few marriages. <laughs> been a few... Well, yeah. No, one marriage, now there's a second. I mean, and her, her children are, are, are exemplary. Mm. So I think a lot, of, a lot of people have a huge amount of affection for Princess Anne. She, she's... I mean, again, I've been again, lucky and privileged to see this firsthand. And her, her private secretary, who retired recently, he always used to say, I've got the hardest-working boss in the world. Yeah. And it was real. She worked... Really, yeah, I think she's totally a real and unsung. sense of well, beauty. And that, well, you say unsung. I mean, her title, the Princess Royal, was recognition, really. For, no, no, from no. I just don't think she ever gets the attention that a lot of the other no. royals get, and she should get more attention. Mm. I think she's. Been, I think she's she's not sure she's that keen on the attention. No. <laughs>